Hello everyone and welcome to Tome of Uselessness. I'm Dan, doing a little solo recording here uh, because I wanted to talk about Final Fantasy Tactics. I just recently finished a playthrough of the game. I hadn't played it in a while. Enjoy this game a lot. So I wanted to share some thoughts with, with you out there. Specifically, I'm going to talk mostly about the Final Fantasy Tactics War of the Lions release, which was a um, remaster or re-release of the game from its original form, which the original game was released in 1998, uh, January 1998, in the West. It came out around the same time as Final Fantasy VII, so it kind of got lost in the shuffle, but I think over time it grew to have a very loyal following, myself included. I love this game. And then they there was a re-release, I remember, um, that I bought... I was one of the first people to ever buy it and then it actually turned out there was like a flaw in the printing because I went back to the store like three times and like the third time the clerk I was like dude try it in your PS like I'm not making this up and yeah there was like a whole flaw in the printing which was hilarious um, but then they did a re-release in 2007 uh, called War of the Lions it came out on the PSP and then also onto like iOS and Android and it's the vastly superior version and pretty much the version I think you're gonna find out there more now. The game's director was Yasumi Matsuno and Matsuno worked at Quest and he was the creator of the Ogre Battle series. So he already had experience in that genre. He began work on this game in 1995. Longtime Final Fantasy producer uh, Hironobu Sakaguchi had an idea for a tactics game in 1993. They actually like created like patent not you know trademark a name and all that kind of stuff like that but nothing really advanced with his idea until 95 when they brought in Matsuno and the designer uh, Hiroyuki Ito he worked I'll talk about it later but he mostly designed like the battle system and that kind of stuff like that uh, the main programmer Taku Mura, Murata sorry and artist Hiroshi Minagawa Akahiko Yoshida and Hideo uh, Minaba. They also worked with Matsuno at Quest. He brought in some of the people that he worked with previously, including the composers uh, Hitoshi Sakamoto and Masaharu Iwata, which is kind of interesting. Like he brought, you know, yeah, like he just kind of put the team back together. <laughs> and then instead of working at uh, Quest, they were working at Square. And I thought this kind of stuff was funny. Uh, Matsuno, he wanted to make a more accessible tactics game because uh, the Ogre Battle series, especially if you've played like um, Tactics Ogre, Let Us Click Together, it's very complex. It's very deep. But there's a lot of stuff going on. And that's not to say this game doesn't because he wanted to make it more, like I said, accessible. And he's admitted in later interviews in life that he failed at that. <laughs> like this game, there is a steep learning curve. Like your first playthrough, if you haven't played it before, it's pretty rough. Like there's a lot going on, uh, which we'll talk about some more coming up. But uh, it doesn't really hold hands, you know, back in the day kind of thing. Like there's no, the first battle is like, yeah, there's a tutorial kind of thing. But after that, it's just like, you're on your own. <laughs> And so Matsuno was the director and the writer. So he wrote the story. And like I said, one of the reasons I think I keep coming back to this game is the story is really good. Very much worth the play through. You know, Final Fantasy's always have a great story. But this one, I think, is it's so unique comparatively to other stuff, especially at the time. Like I said, Final Fantasy VII was just released. Um, and then this came before VIII. It's unique in its story. If all, you follow your, the main character... Uh, Ramza, if you don't name him something else. Uh, he's a, you're a cadet um, noble in um, like a military school and you, you're going to be a knight and all that kind of stuff like that. And then the game transitions into the Lion War, which is about uh, noble factions battling for the regency of a kingdom. Like I said, just at the time, especially, it was a very grounded story comparatively to other things out there so it's pretty cool I'll talk a bit about more a bit later a bit because it takes place in Ivalice which he created which has been used in other games since 
one of the things that I really like about the game, and I think you know keeps me coming back, and a lot of strategy games are like this, it's not unique in Final Fantasy Tactics, is that this one has um, a job system instead of like a class system where every character is a specific class. There's a job system, and I believe in War of the Lions, it's 22 jobs are unlockable in the system. And so it gives you just so much variety, and there's so many tools and so many abilities. So you can really like mix and match and try different things. Like one of the reasons I've come back to it is that maybe I'll have an idea for a build or I want to try a different track. Maybe because the main character, he is fortunately pretty good at whatever track you put him on. So, you know, maybe you'll go full martial and try some different stuff. And then you're like, the next time, okay, well, I'll make him a pure wizard and try that out and stuff like that. So there's a lot of different things you can try and a lot of different abilities to mix and match, which <laughs> was one of the things that uh, um, Ito, uh, the designer, complained about. And um, Matt, Matsuno was like, no, because he, um, Ito was unfortunately trying to balance <laughs> things around this. And there are you know, combinations that you can use that break the game or just make things easier and stuff like that. And that can be fun or, you know, you might not like that, but it's like, yeah, I think I said, I think it keeps me coming back because of the, the variety of jobs and the things you can try and what you focus on and everything like that. So really cool system, a lot of fun. The only thing that I think is kind of um, a little odd is that when you get to chapter four, near, uh, chapter four is the last chapter of the game you start to get more characters join your party. And so at that point, you know, the characters you have, they've learned abilities and etc. over time, but you might have to ditch them for these new characters because the new characters they give you are very powerful. And so they're worth using because they'll help you kind of, you know, in your upcoming battles and stuff like that. So it it, it kind of makes you, that it's, it's a flaw from RPGs of this era where, you know, the party members you don't use never get experience. They just chill out. <laughs> and then, you, you know, maybe in a, in a story reason, you have to use them in your party and they're 20 levels lower than everybody else because you haven't been using them. <laughs> uh, yeah, like, because in this game, the system is you, you get experience uh, and job points for doing actions. Uh, the job points are what you use to buy your abilities. And so you, every character only gets experience from doing something so even in a battle if they're there and they don't do anything they don't get any experience again like i said a lot of systems going on so it's tough uh, to either level up or to keep some characters on board like rpgs of this era i had my five characters those were the ones i used the entire time and then i got some of the newer characters in chapter four and i want to put them into my party you, you ditch your other ones <laughs> yeah and some of the characters you can unlock it's, uh, it's pretty fun. You can unlock Cloud Strife and, you know, find his Buster Sword, which is on top of a mountain in a, in a lava level. And even the journey to unlock Cloud Strife also unlocks more characters as you go. And, you know, you get like golems or monsters. And so there's a lot of stuff kind of going on there, which is pretty fun. You can unlock a uh, Balthier from Final Fantasy XII in the re-release in um, War of the Lions. You can un also unlock a character from Tactics Advance. Luso Clemens from Tactics Advance, A or Tactics A Two, uh, Grimoire of the Rift. I personally haven't played that one, but so yeah, there's a couple special characters you can unlock there, and they have unique abilities like Cloud. You know, you get his Buster Sword, and then he has all sorts of like you can unlock his Omni Slash and stuff like that. Yeah, lots of cool stuff there as far as the classes, the characters, and the party design. Um, in the War of the Lions, because there is like a Dark Knight type class, uh, that's some of the characters, one of the characters you start with in the beginning, Gafgarian, he's uh, a Dark Knight, just super powerful abilities, and then near the end of the game you get two more characters who join who have similar abilities, uh, but they let you make a Dark Knight if you wanted to in War of the Lions. The only problem is, <laughs> it's a very long path like in my current uh, my re most recent playthrough i didn't get there because i wasn't gonna do a lot of uh, extra grinding i was just kind of like playing through the game for the fun of it and i still would have had to master or like max out like three other jobs before i even got there so it's a long path but if you can get there because i've done it in the past um super cool and then you become the overpowered dark knight <laughs> which again 
is pretty fun. Uh, Matsuno designed most of the game systems, like I was saying, the job system and everything, that all comes from him. And he wrote all of the, you know, the story and the dialogue. Um, but then Ito was designing the combat system. And he didn't like tactical RPGs of the time. And he thought they just kind of like were boring. He thought they kind of went on too long. So he wanted the battle system to be fast and engaging and uh, take place on like small little levels. And I do think that's one of the reasons I also enjoy this game. The battles are fast. Like, <laughs> like you can, you know, if you're really kind of going all out, you can win some of them within the first round. You can win some of them within the fifth round. Many times, uh, if your character, you know, gets zero hit points, he'll go unconscious for three rounds. And, you know, you can always resurrect him. But if after three rounds, they'll turn into a diamond or a treasure chest or whatever. And they're permadead. If that happens, of course, to the main character, the game game over. But three rounds is sufficient time <laughs> to potentially win a battle. Like so, the, the the battles are not long drawn out affairs. And because in a battle you'll only have your party of five, um, sometimes maybe four because there'll be a guest character, or sometimes you know you have your five and a guest will show up. So you got like six guys on your team, but you're not controlling one of them. It's an AI kind of situation there. But yeah, the battles are quick. The monster design, there's a lot of classic Final Fantasy monsters, um, you know, bomb, the bombs and centaurs and goblins and etc. Because most of the time in this game, because of the story, you're fighting humans. It's mostly, like I said, taking place where you're in a kingdom, the kingdom of Ivalice, in a civil war. And so you're mostly fighting uh, the other knights, archers, thieves, etc. So there's a lot of like human sprites running around with just different clothing. So yeah, Matsuno, in this story design, he wanted to give it like a, a swashbuckling, adventuring feel. Uh, the thematic use of like a class society kind of came from his working at game companies where he saw hierarchies essentially, like you know how like the top people were being treated more as royalty versus the lower peasantry class and kind of thing, and that's very much this game. Like you play a noble, your family house is no nobility, it's other nobilities, clashing against each other, playing the Game of Thrones, as it were, but all the peasantry are being left in the dust and, you know, being used for fodder and battles and everything like that. So, yeah, more of a political story comparatively to so many other Final Fantasies. And over time, it does change and become more in a quote-unquote classic Final Fantasy style where you're eventually fighting demons from the outworld and stuff like that. <laughs> But it doesn't come out of nowhere, like, you know, that's it's introduced over time. And it's pretty cool because what happens is there's the main political story happening, and then you're, there's your story, and they're running parallel. So you'll see both stories happening at the same time. And while your character is trying to help people or recruit people to try to be like, hey, there's something more going on. The other people are like, well, yeah, okay, there's something more going on, but we have, like, an actual war to fight still. We got to deal with this because there's civil war, the people are dying and stuff like that, right? So um, it's pretty cool how that plays out throughout the game. Yeah, Matsuno was inspired by the recovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls because the start of the game, this is not a spoiler, <laughs> it's a historian saying how this history of this man, it was buried and now it's being rediscovered. And I'm telling you the real story, which, like I was saying, that's like Ramza's story, your story, because everybody focused on the political real world story, but people don't know what you did behind the scenes. So again, I, I, I think it kind of gives it a cool angle to the story where it was like, yeah, you were there, you were involved in some of the events in the main civil war, but you're an unknown because what you really did was buried takes place in Ivelisse, like I was saying. Um, I didn't know until really recently is that Final Fantasy XII also takes place in Ivelisse. But Final Fantasy XII is like the time of legend being described in Final Fantasy Tactics. So Final Fantasy Tactics is in the future. I always assumed it was the opposite. <laughs> but yeah, so Final Fantasy Tactics is like the future of Ivelisse where, um, you know, things of fallen and technology has gotten worse and you know civil wars have occurred wars between kingdoms um, because Ivalice, the country you're in 
it's a small little country, kind of similar to like a Valkyria Chronicle, Chronicles, sorry, where it's like, yeah, like you're like this small country surrounded by three other countries. And um, at the beginning of the game, you just got out of a war, the 50 year war with another one, which you lost, you at least lost. And so it's like they had to pay reparations. So the situation's bad. And then the king dies and there's a power vacuum and stuff like that. In the War of the Lions, they, there's a couple things they did. One of the things bad about the War of the Lions is that they, for some reason, like the, the PlayStation version was like locked at 60 frames a second. So it would play like very quick and, you know, the, all the abilities would be like snappy. For some reason that didn't happen in the War of the Lions. I was reading an, an article and there was the localization people were like, oh, we didn't weren't in control of that because unfortunately in the War of the Lions, like if you use some, some magic abilities take a long time for their animations to play out. Whereas, like, you know, walking around, you know, swinging a sword, etc. happens really fast. But, like, some of the bigger summons, some of the uh, magic effects where they affect, say, everybody on the map, it just takes a long time to play out, which can be very annoying. <laughs> but uh, that is the reality. But uh, one of the better things they did was is they retranslated the game because the PlayStation 1 translation is really bad. <laughs> And it could just be maybe they just didn't have the time or, you know, the language is just unfamiliar. I, I don't know the reasons, but they did a new translation. The producer, Akatoshi Kawazu, he wanted, he basically says is like, this game has a lot of text because it does, because all of the dialogue, like all of the cutscenes, there's, aside from the few that they added for War of the Lions, where they do like a hand-drawn cell animation, everything else is like, a little diorama, two characters talking or multiple characters talking and they're just talking and talking and talking. <laughs> and even within battles, there'll be dialogue between, say, the main character and somebody else or what have you. So it really adds... You, the story is always happening, which is always great. But yeah, lots of text in it. And so they assigned that to Joe Reader and then he got in fellow translator uh, Tom Slattery uh, who both worked at Square Enix, and then at the time uh, they were working back and forth, and then uh, Reader left the translation project to go work on Final Fantasy XII, Revenant Wings, and so Slattery became like the main translator. But this new translation is so much better, so much clearer about what the heck is even going on. But one of the things they did also do is they kind of like made the language similar to medieval English because the setting is. A medieval setting <laughs> and so you know there'll be it'll be familiar if you've read Shakespeare or that kind of thing right like some of the the old English words or some of the sentence structures are not what we use in modern English um, but you, you get it it's not like so far removed that it's you'll never understand <laughs> but it's it's a much better much better story much better dialogue much clearer about what the heck is going on you know, whose motivations or what and why some of the things, why they say some of the things they say, like why one character feels insulted by the, the line where you're like, I don't understand, like, I don't get it. <laughs> but yeah, so they cleared all that up. They made it much, much better. And they also changed some of the wording to reflect like more common Final Fantasy, uh, you know, magic or summons or this or that kind of thing. So it would actually fall in line with the Final Fantasy that has come since tactics was uh one tip i'll give if you're gonna play the game is that the squire job it has the jp boost uh ability which that was that's the the main experience to learn abilities is job points and so boosting that more points per action <laughs> lets you learn stuff quicker i think the game is incredibly well made lots of fun if you enjoy strategy stuff, and I think it can be a, an entry into strategy games, because like I said, it is a little stripped down in some areas. Fortunately, now with the internet, there's a lot of guides and help to help you kind of, in the, because the, the difficulty curve is odd, where it's very difficult in the beginning. Your characters don't have a lot of skills. <laughs> you might not even know what you're doing. As you go and get more skilled, it keeps up and stuff like that. And then there's a couple big spike points where you may run into a, a battle that is very difficult. <laughs> and then it kind of like, like I said, by the end, especially when they give you these other powerful characters, it kind of lowers the difficulty curve, unfortunately. 
you know, you can finish out pretty good. This game, I think before this game, I was had already kind of started a system, but this game, like, refined my save system when it comes to RPGs, where I have a save at a town, so it's like you can still buy resources or what have you. Then I'll have a second save for when I'm walking around, you know, on the overworld map in case you run into a random, random battle you don't like or whatever. And then I'll have a third save for when you enter in dungeons or uh, in, in this game, and it's mostly keeps and castles. Because then when you get deeper into those, sometimes, you know, you'll win a battle save and then you'll, there'll be another immediately a battle. If that second battle, you can't beat it, you're, that's okay if you have the multiple saves. <laughs> so I highly recommend the multiple saves because sometimes you have to go back. I had to do it in this playthrough because there is a fight at the end of chapter three, particularly it's well known. It's very difficult. Like it kind of comes, not comes out of nowhere, but it's just like, you're like, okay, you know, the fights are hard, fights are hard. And then this guy is beyond everything else that you've encountered so far. <laughs> and I, I went back. I, I was close to being able to beat him, but I was like, oh man, I don't think I'm strong enough. I need like maybe one or two more levels. And then, so yeah, I did a little bit of grinding and then went back in and I was still technically below the kind of the threshold, but because I played the game a lot, I kind of was able to win out the fight. Uh, barely, actually. I, I beat that guy literally on like the last round the, with the last attack <laughs> kind of a thing, but I beat him. Having a strategy with your saves also comes into play a lot as well. And there's even, yeah, there's a lot of stuff you can do to manipulate uh, your character. Like I was saying, it's like you can um, do things, change your armors and what have you, like change weapons. Um, I was, like I said, a difficult fight and I knew a character, his his sword is like his main attack. So I could, he, and he's very strong. So I switched my character to a different one who could break weapons. And then I just focused on breaking that guy's weapon. And when I did, then the fight became far easier, <laughs> right? So, you know, there's all sorts of stuff like that kind of going on. Um, but yeah, do recommend a multiple save system. So then you can always uh, backtrack without having to soft lock yourself. Because <laughs> no one wants to do that. Final Fantasy Tactics, War of the Lions, it's out there. Easily obtainable now. And I highly recommend... It's just interesting to me. Like I said, this game came out in 98 and I've played it a bunch of times. It's still good. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. Um, if you want to check out more of our stuff, uh, episodes with Devin and I, uh, tomeofuselessness.com is our website, but we're available on all pa podcast platforms. Share and review and ratings and all that kind of good stuff. You can email us, tomeofuselessness at gmail.com. Nice and easy. And Instagram, same thing, tomeofuselessness. Uh, but yeah, email with some comments, questions, topic ideas. Stay safe. Thanks for listening.